Welcome to The Outlet, an NBA podcast hosted by Nick Fay and Corey Waldron. On this episode, Corey and I recap game one of the NBA Finals. As always, you can catch The Outlet on all streaming platforms. Enjoy the show. Corey, game one wrapped up. Lakers dominated the Miami Heat. You know, in the first quarter, felt like maybe the Heat would make this a serious. Things were going to be fun. Lakers said, no, no, no. By the time the second quarter was over, this this game was over. Yeah, I mean, and it, it all kind of unraveled rather quickly. Uh, some injuries for Miami, which we're probably going to spend a lot of time talking about. Uh, I felt like when Jimmy Butler, even though he played the rest of the game, even though he's he, when he sprained his ankle, I felt like, uh oh, like this could be yeah. the turning point. Um, obviously, that first quarter was close. I know in the first six minutes, I was like, you know, maybe I should be rethinking Lakers in six. This might be a tougher series. And then the Lakers took over, uh, shot ridiculously well from three, hit all, almost all of their free throws. And if the Lakers are dominating in those two areas and dominating on the rebounding category, bold trouble for the other team. And then when your team is also hobbled by injuries, not a good matchup. Uh, AD, dominant. Like, he had 28 points, and it was, like, a pretty quiet yet dominating 28 points. Easy LeBron. 28. Uh, it, it was a dominating Lakers game one performance, which makes you think, you know, could be a sweep. It could definitely be a sweep. And like you said, the game started out 23-10 to 10 in favor of the Heat. And like you said, yeah, everyone's like, oh, shit, I picked the Lakers. Maybe these guys are right picking the Heat and things like that. First quarter ends 31-28 Lakers because of a 19-3 run. I know you got another run stat for us later in the show. And just to give you an idea, the final score was 116-98. And it seems closer because the Lakers are up by 30 points in the third quarter at one point, just continuing to dominate. And like you said, they got out to that hot start in three-point shooting-wise. I want to say they started the game 11-17 of 17 from three, which is just insane. Yeah. They finished 15-38, of 38, but that 11-17 of 17 really killed the Heat in the first half because the Heat were giving so much attention to LeBron and Anthony Davis. And then it felt like in the second half, Half, they started to kind of adjust and give them less attention and then like you said Anthony Davis and LeBron just said hey we're gonna cook your defenders because none of them can defend us right and then you got three I mean even though he teetered out uh Danny Green all three of his makes yeah. from deep were in the first half uh and a couple of them one of them was a pretty tough three that he hit he had a he had a pump fake to get one of the defenders to blow by him then hit it um obviously you know Caldwell Pope was okay but LeBron hit a couple deep threes it was like you said the pressure that that the Lakers were able to put on the heat in that first half, um, you know, really was the difference maker. And then of course, like I just want to you know, spew out the stat. Now the Lakers at one point were on a 75 to 30 run in this yeah. game. Uh, Miami had no answer. Of course, when Bam Adebayo went out of the game is really when it felt like all things were lost. Now kudos to the heat because they didn't roll over in this game. They yeah. cut it down to almost 12 points. I believe um, they were really battling in the fourth quarter to get back in this game. But again, uh, you can only lose so many players and make up so much ground. Eventually, the Lakers were going to put back in LeBron and AD. And once they did, this game again was going to be a wrap. Yeah, you knew LeBron was going to blow it. And like you, you were mentioning, like the Heat couldn't get their offense going in that second half or in that second quarter. The Lakers started to lock things up, and some of those shots weren't falling. And there were some sloppy mistakes from Andre Iguodala, you know, Jimmy Butler at times, and then Goran Dragic, who got hurt later in the game, wasn't great as well. And like you mentioned with Bam, not only did he get hurt in this game, he did get into foul trouble early on. He had two fouls quickly in that first quarter. Then he couldn't play as much. That allowed the Heat, to, uh, the Lakers to get into rhythm because when he's not out there defensively, the Heat are not the same level team on that side of the floor. No, 100%. Uh, and there's no defense tonight. It didn't do much of anything. Um, no. I mean, look, I mean, Eh, no, nah, it really didn't do much of anything. I mean, it was somewhat effective in the second half when the role players started going out there, but more or less, it, it didn't do anything to bother or disrupt LeBron and AD in that first half. And I felt like everything in the second half, and we kind of tweet some tweets about this, that it almost doesn't really matter because, like, the Lakers were up so big that even what you saw, are guys fully into it? Are they fully trying? When you have a 20-point lead, it's hard to play at that same level. And even the Heat getting back into the game, it's kind of like, all right, they put the role players out there. They're not trying as hard. They clearly saw how much more talented they were than the Heat tonight. Yeah, oh, 100%. Um, you know, Le LeBron was the the uh the general tonight picking apart the heat uh you know i mean a little bit of stat padding late in that game um but it, it was a it was pretty much from start to finish after that first six minutes the Lakers were in control yeah the heat had a good six minutes of the game and then after that it was just pretty much a run like and, you, and the worst part about that is 
despite him even you know spraining his ankle, Jimmy Butler probably had the best Jimmy Butler game you're going to get. I mean, at least in terms of being aggressive. He hit he was two for two to, from three to start off the game. He looked really good and aggressive. Um, I thought Bam also was really good and aggressive early. Those two guys definitely had it going this game. And you still lose by such a dramatic number. Of course, there's injuries, but that's also problematic if you're Miami because your best two guys had almost their best performance and you still couldn't even really hold your own in this game. Yeah, I think it'd be concerning for the Butler stuff because I don't know if he'll get back to that level. 23 points, 8 of 13, 2 of 4 from 3, 5 of 5 from the free throw line. And we talk about this a lot in the recaps. Ankle sprains sometimes affect you more in the next game or the next yep. couple of days in comparison to the night it actually happens. And it felt like I, I want to say he re-injured it again in the second half where he like had one play where he was like hobbling a little bit extra. And I was like, not not a good sign. I mean, other than the injuries, which we're going to talk about next, do you think going to the next game Miami needs to play bigger? Like Kelly Olynyk needs to see more minutes with Bam or Myers Leonard or it doesn't really matter? Because the I Lakers did go smaller in the second quarter too. Yeah. Um, I mean, Dwight Howard didn't look good tonight, so you could try some different looks. I don't think that's the ideal solution I mean, because AD is going to have no problem with either one of Kelly Olynyk or Miles Leonard because they're not good defenders. Yeah. Now, they may provide a different look to the Miami Heat's offense because they can both stretch the floor a little bit better, but yeah. I think you're giving up too much defensively for them to make that kind of impact. Yeah, I think you have to just kind of get Bam on Anthony Davis. That's your best chance. Like yeah. giving him some of these easy looks when he has Jay Crowder or he has Jimmy Butler or whatever it might be. And, and I get it. The switching is huge. And I felt like different points of switching was big for Miami getting stops early in this game. But as soon as the Lakers kind of got a feel for that, they're like, all right, we know where to attack. And then all those double teams, like we talked about getting those open three point shots, it's really going to be an uphill battle for Miami in the series. And let's talk about those injuries. We already mentioned Jimmy Butler, uh, Bam, Hurt his shoulder in this game, didn't play in the second half. He bounced off Dwight Howard, and it looked like it could have also been bothering him on other plays too, and not just specifically that one. So what are your thoughts on Bam moving forward in the series? I mean, Bam's been banged up, right? The wrist last yeah. series as well. Um, I definitely saw the shoulder injury in a prior series as well. Um, so like, this is not like a new injury. It's, if anything, it's just re-aggravated. And is it re-aggravated worse? What does it look like going forward? Because he's a crucial element. I also like... Shoulder injuries are a really tough injury uh, and, and yeah. just about anything because you need it for everything. You can't rebound efficiently. You can't shoot. You can't pass. Like, you need your shoulder for a lot of activities. Um, and so, when you're a, bang, a big and banging down low, right. like, you're getting a lot of contact. 100%. So uh, it's problematic, of course, especially because, you know, we had the argument and the, the discussion on the preview pod of, you know, was Bam their third best player going into this series? Um, yeah. And already, you know, losing, again, you know, we knew who the top two guys were. Third and fourth were Jimmy Butler and Bam. Losing Bam's crucial for the Miami Heat. And then we talk about, you know, we're going to talk about Goran Dragic. Those were like the three best players for Miami. And you might have two of them out for, if not one game, the duration of this series. And let's talk Dragic because there were some mentions online that maybe it was an Achilles tear or maybe it's a foot injury. And based off the way it looked and the way that Rachel Nichols reported, it seems like either he tore his Achilles or he might have fractured a bone in his foot. So I'm not sure if it's that severe. Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll be just a foot sprain, an ankle sprain or something. But I'll say this. If Dragic is out the rest of the series, this is probably a sweep. Yeah, it, I mean, unless – I mean, you're depending way too much on rookies yeah. if Goran Dragic is, is gone. And at this point in time, even though Tyler Harrow has played fantastic, you know, Kendrick Nunn, I don't actually think he played terrible in the minutes that he got in the second half. But A lot of there, garbage minutes, though. Right. And there's also a reason why he has not touched the floor in a lot of games, because he mm -hmm. lost his role in the rotation because he wasn't shooting well, wasn't playing overall well. Um, so providing minutes to rookies, it's always a little bit of a of a, a worry and a concern. And like you said, if Dragic's out for the duration, I think it dramatically changes this series because that was a guy who they could lean on to create some offense for himself late in games. Now you're going to be depending on young guys. And like you said, injury wise, um, you know, whether it's a, a fractured bone or an Achilles, it. it Either way, uh, it sounds like he's going to be done regardless for ga for games, if not the series. Like It doesn't seem like he's going to be back anywhere as close to like a game three. Yeah, so obviously prayers out for Goran Dragic. Hopefully he can recover and it's not nothing serious because it is a contract year for him. He had a great postseason. He's probably about to get a big paycheck and hopefully it's nothing too bad. And also not having Dragic allows it doesn't allow you to have anybody really in terms of play creation when Jimmy Butler is on off the floor. Like, that's right. where Dragic is so good is because, hey, we can get uh, Butler some minutes on the bench. Dragic can run the show, give us some points, set up the offense. Now, you what do you have to play, Jimmy, 40, 44 no, minutes? I think, well, you have to play Jimmy more, but if not, 
Iggy becomes like your point forward. Iggy's going to have to play a lot more minutes and focus on mainly being a facilitator. But again, Iggy's biggest issue is if he's not hitting his jump shot consistently, you can play off of him and he changes the way the defense operates. Um, but it's probably going to mean more Iggy because you can't rely on Hero. Uh, you can't rely on Kendrick Nunn or Duncan Robinson. Jake. Those guys aren't creators for others. So it's yeah. now Jimmy Butler and Iggy as your next you know, two creators. Yeah, and I don't. I wouldn't. I'd feel pretty terrible if I had to go into a game two with Andre Iguodala as my secondary creator. Like just yeah, because no, I, at this point in his career, he he can't score. Like he's not going to take anybody off the dribble and get to the rim unless it's on like a closeout or something like that. And people aren't closing hard on him because he can't shoot threes. I would almost probably lean more towards Tyler Hero, probably being that creator. He showed a little bit in that Boston series. That's probably your best bet. I mean. Kendrick Nunn's going to have an opportunity to do that. You know, obviously played a ton of minutes, started for them this year, so there's an opportunity there. But you just can't feel good about losing your third or fourth best player in a series where you're already suffering from a talent gap. 100%. Um, so, Miami's in a really tough spot going into game two and the rest of this series. Any other final thoughts, Corey? No, I mean, um, you know, uh, kudos to the Lakers because they took care of business, right? I mean, even though they were down late, you have to give credit to the fact they bounced back. Everybody hit their shots. They played good defense throughout most of the game. LeBron and AD looked the, the best they could have looked in the game one. Um, so one team you know, was able to take care of business, and the other team, unfortunately, they ran into some un- unfortunate circumstances. Yeah, agreed. And I think for the Lakers, like they're not going to shoot this well from three every game this series, I don't think. But if they do, it's a, I would say it's a guaranteed sweep. Oh, go ahead. You want a fun stat? Um, uh, Matt Brooks had somebody on his podcast, and I was I tuned into it for a brief second. The Lakers are 13 and 0 now after tonight when they shoot over 30% from 3 in the playoffs. 13 and 0. So all 30, they have to do is shoot over 30% from 3. 30% is not a high number either. We're not no. talking about 35 or 40. 30% is doable and I mean just based off of the options they have to defend LeBron and Anthony Davis, they're going to get these open looks because you know, we talked about Jay Crowder and Andre Guadal and Jimmy Butler having experience defending LeBron. It doesn't matter because he's just so much bigger and stronger than those guys. And they're all further along in their career. Where maybe if you're giving me a prime athlete in terms of Jimmy Butler, you might be able to do a little bit more just because he has that extra energy. Same thing with Iguodala. Jay Crowder's never really been a guy that can defend LeBron. So, And just like Anthony Davis, if he doesn't have Bam on him— He's cooking every single other person on the Heat roster. Right. So I feel I feel really good about I was a Lakers fan. I feel really good about winning game two, especially knowing that the Heat are going to be banged up in that game. 100%. And like you said, I think the biggest question will be, what does Jimmy Butler look like? Because like we mentioned, after you sprain your ankle, it's normally okay the rest of that game. And then the next day when you start stiffening up, it's going to be a lot yeah. worse. So. so. Uh, not not a good look for Heat fans, obviously. We'll see what happens the rest of the series. Hopefully we get more competitive basketball because I'm not going to lie, after the second quarter, this game was pretty much over and not very enjoyable. So, no, it wasn't. Uh, big shout out to everybody for listening and checking out all these recaps. We'll be doing it the rest of the finals. And as always, you can catch us on YouTube and all streaming platforms. Peace out, Nick Lads.